Welcome to Bluegrass. We are so glad that you joined us today. We hope you find this time together to be uplifting and inspirational. Above all, we want you to feel welcome. So if you have any questions, prayer requests, or just want to know more about how to get connected to Bluegrass, visit bluegrassumc.org slash connect. Today, we continue the series forward. As the Israelites escaped captivity, they had to adjust to new normals on their way to the promised land. Again, thanks for being with us today. Now, let's begin. Let's take this moment gathered where we are as the body of Christ. Even though we may be separated a little bit, we are one in the Spirit. And we are in the presence of the Holy Spirit at this time as we gather to worship. And as we worship, let's praise God for His faithfulness. Let's sing praises to Him for His faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses, above join with all nature in man for witness to thy great faithfulness mercy love great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies I see all I have needed thy hand hath provided great is thy faithfulness Lord I'm pardon for sin and the peace that endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow Blessings all mine with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I am needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me.
Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. You are my everything and I will adore you. Clothed in rainbows of living color, flashes of lightning, rolls of thunder, blessing and honor, strength and glory and power be to you, the only wise King. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Filled with wonder, awestruck wonder, at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath and living water, such a marvelous mystery. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. If you would, please join me in prayer. Father God, thank you so much for another day, another breath, another moment to gather together in worship and celebration of you. We ask, Lord, that as we come to you this morning, you would help us to bring you what we have. Everything that's built up during the course of this week, our joys, our sorrows, our celebrations, our, our victories, our, our defeats, our uncertainties, our doubts, that we would come to you with all of it and give it to you. Lord, that we would look to you, that we would rest in you, that we would trust in you, that we would celebrate you for who you are, for what you have done, and for what you are doing in us, through us, and in the world. We thank you, Lord, that you are the God who is with us in the midst of everything. That wherever we are and whatever we're facing, whatever we're going through, whatever season of life we may be in, you, Lord, are with us and we are yours. Help us in this moment, help us in this time to rest and trust in that, to rest and trust in you. 
as we sing and as we pray, as we worship and adore, Lord. Let our hearts and our minds be focused and intent on you. Let us experience the movement of the Holy Spirit, your Holy Spirit in our midst, in our hearts and in our minds, and let us be changed to be more like you. The Lord, as we go into the world, we might live more like you, that the world might see more of you, and that in all of it, you would continue to be worshiped by your church. And so, Father God, come and be praised, come and be celebrated, come and be worshiped, not just in this moment, in our songs, in our prayers, in our attentions, as your word is proclaimed, but in our lives. Because we, Lord, we are yours. You are our God and we are your people. Help us to live as such, that in all of it, we would continue to worship you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome to worship on this day that we celebrate our fathers. We give thanks to God for our fathers and our father figures, whether they're living or they've passed away, for all the contributions they have made to our lives. So today is a day to celebrate our fathers. You know, I do give thanks for both my father and grandfathers, though they're all passed away. They were skilled workers who taught by example and gave me many opportunities to learn by doing on the farm, at home, or in the shop. I still treasure their wisdom and their generosity and passing along to me valuable knowledge and problem-solving skills. On one occasion when a repair was needed for the old combine, Grandpa wanted me to uh, climb inside the machine from the back end discharge section. Now, as a young boy, climbing inside a dark, dirty combine was a fearful thing to ask because I just could imagine this thing gobbling me up and spitting me out. Now, of course, the machine was shut off, but I still had that fear. I remember Grandpa taking a big piece of cardboard and laying on that pointy metal chaffer mechanism so I could lay on it, hold a wrench, on the nut of the bolt that he was accessing from outside the combine. Because I trusted my grandfather, I was willing to overcome my fear and climb inside that dark claustrophobic machine and the repair was made. You know, God wanted Israel to overcome their fear and trust him to be their loving father as he led them forward to a new place. In Exodus 16, verses 2 to 8, we read this, In the desert the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day, they are to prepare what they bring in, and that is to be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you will know that it was the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, and in the morning you will see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we that you should grumble against us? Moses also said, You will know that it was the Lord when he gives you meat to eat in the evening and all the bread you want in the morning, because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we? You are not grumbling against us, but against the Lord. When we grumble, who are we really grumbling against? Of course, there are times when we justly grumble against the decisions and the actions of people who mistreat and mislead us. However, the Israelites should have known better that there was a greater power leading them than Moses and Aaron. God was at work. God was demonstrating through the plagues and through the miracle at the Red Sea just how awesome of God he was. So it should have become clear to the Israelites that Moses and Aaron weren't the true leaders. They were really more middle managers for the Lord. Anytime such an obvious connection is made between a person and God in life or scripture, we need to understand that when we grumble, 
we're not just grumbling against that person, but we are grumbling against the Lord as well. So we need to be cautious. As we said in an earlier series, God does welcome our complaints. God's big enough to handle all the complaints that we bring to Him. But there is a difference between lamenting and grumbling to the Lord. Lamenting turns to God, tells God our complaint, asks God specifically what we want Him to do, and then trusts Him to do it in His time. However, grumbling goes to the Lord, offers the complaint, and that's it. Nothing more. There's no sincere asking, no trusting, and no waiting on Him to bring the answer. Well, the Israelites not only complained to Moses and Aaron and to the Lord, but they also wanted to go back to where they had come. They wanted to go back to the past rather than go forward with the Lord, their good Father. Now, it was early on in their journey and their journey of faith, God in His mercy responded to their complaint. He heard it. But God said He was going to give them a test to see whether or not they would listen and follow Him in the future. Now, it wasn't really a complicated test. It wasn't a bubble test. It wasn't an essay test. It was a four-part test of obedience. God said He would shower the earth every morning with the bread of heaven. The people were to go out and gather enough for each person in their family each day. The amount was described to be an omer, which when translated is about three pounds or more. That's per person. That's an outrageous amount of bread. You know, I checked a loaf of bread this morning and it's about a pound and four ounces. One loaf of bread, a pound, four ounces. That tells us that the good father was demonstrating extreme generosity and providing far more bread than each person could consume in a day so they would never cry out and hunger again. So the first part of the test was for them to go and gather just the right amount for that day. Surely everyone got this part of the test correct. We read about this in verses 17 and 18. The Israelites did as they were told. Some gathered much, some little. And when they measured it by the omer, the one who gathered much did not have too much, The one who gathered little did not have too little. Everyone had gathered just as much as they needed. So it appears that some gathered more, some not enough, but then it was supernaturally measured all to equal an omer. God gave them an easy question, and even if they missed it, He still gave them credit for it. You know, I'm sure there are things like that in our lives as well that we shouldn't miss that are easy but God is that merciful father gives us grace even when we mess up the easy stuff I remember it was probably a a year ago or so I gave a little quiz to you our congregation in one of my messages and however I had the wrong answer can you believe that I had the wrong answer for one of the questions that I should have known better it was just a brain failing moment it was talking about Paul on his way to Damascus, I think I said the correct answer was Paul on his way to Tarsus. Of course, that's where Paul was from. And so here I am speaking and leading and giving a quiz and I give a ridiculous wrong answer. I'm misleading my congregation. Well, not really because many of you and your kindness said, Pastor, wasn't Paul going to Damascus? And so I couldn't fool you, thankfully. And I trust that you had pity on me. And I trust that God in His mercy had pity on me as well. If you remember, I did come the next Sunday and correct my mistake. Well, the second part of the test was to determine whether they would hoard any of the manna overnight. God wanted them to know that they could trust Him to provide what they needed each and every day. It's why we pray in the Lord's Prayer, give us today our daily bread. It's a prayer to remind us not to worry about tomorrow, but to trust God to supply what we need for today, today. In Matthew 6, Jesus says this, So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. 
Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. In other words, take care of your spiritual priorities. Take care of seeking first the kingdom and God's righteousness, and the physical things will fall in place. That's why we read in the well-known Psalm 23, David says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I am satisfied, I am content, I have what I need. Why is that? Well, he tells us, the Lord is my shepherd. He has made his spiritual priorities first, and God is providing what he needs beyond that. Well, to be honest, most of us don't have to worry much about our daily bread. As Americans, in relation to the rest of the world, most of us are classified as wealthy. If you make $25,000 a year, you're richer than 86% of the world. If you make $50,000 a year, you're richer than 95% of the world. If you make $100,000 a year or more, you're richer than 99% of the world. Most of us then can purchase what we need or what we want when we want it. To be honest, little trust is actually needed for our daily needs to be met. So how did the Israelites then do with this part of the test? We'll read about it in verses 19 and 20. Then Moses said to them, No one is to keep any of it until morning. However, some of them paid no attention to Moses. They kept part of it until morning, but it was full of maggots and began to smell. So Moses was angry with them. Some of them failed and everyone knew it because they could smell it. Are you passing the test of trust today? Do you believe God has and will supply your every need? Are you deeply thankful for what you have and the ability to earn what you have? Are you generous with what you have, recognizing that it really all belongs to our Father in heaven anyway, and He desires us to be generous and share it with others? The third test was for them to gather twice as much on the sixth day so they would have enough for the Sabbath. I love that God mixes it up. First he told them not to hoard any overnight, but now he comes and he says, here's an exception. On the sixth day, I want you to take enough for the seventh day. You know, we need to recognize and appreciate God's pattern is God's pattern. We don't have to understand it, even though it's easily understood here. You know, we cannot try to make God's way conform to our way. Scripture says that His ways and His thoughts are much higher and much greater than ours. So we must submit to His ways, to His wisdom, and to His authority as a manner of the way in which we worship Him. In fact, Romans 12, 1-2 tells us, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, in view of all that God has done for you, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. You know, the most pleasing sacrifice that we can offer to God is to refuse to conform to earthly patterns. And so through the supernatural transformation of our redemption and through the work of the Holy Spirit in our life, our minds are being renewed so that we can understand and so that we can do the perfect will of our Father, which is meant for His glory and our benefit as we go forward with Him. The fourth test fell on the Sabbath. We read about it in verses 23 to 26. He said to them, This is what the Lord commanded. Tomorrow is to be a day of Sabbath rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. So bake what you want to bake and boil what you want to boil. Save whatever is left and keep it until morning. So they saved it until morning, as Moses commanded. And it did not stink or get maggots in it. Eat it today, Moses said. Because today is a Sabbath to the Lord. You will not find any of it on the ground today. Six days you are to gather it, but on the seventh day, the Sabbath, there will not be any. You know, when I went to Israel many years ago, in the Jewish hotels, 
they prepared the meal for the Sabbath for the guests on the sixth day and kept it warm in special ovens and, and warmers for the seventh day so that they did not have to cook on the seventh day. So that pattern continues today that they work on the sixth day to prepare for the seventh day. And so as the Father modeled the pattern of Sabbath in creation, so He desired His people to follow His lead as a time of rest for them and even for the animals, we're told later. It was considered to be a holy time set apart for the Lord. It was meant to be a time to cease from all the feverishly doing to enjoying just being with the Father and being with the family. It was a time that God built into the rhythm of life so that we could be renewed in body and mind and soul. I believe the Sabbath principle still holds true today. But do we trust God enough to practice it? Now, it may not happen on Sunday because of work schedules, but do we set aside one-seventh of our time for holy rest and recreation, which God established for our benefit and His glory? You know, one of the most commented on benefits for those who have been able to slow down during COVID-19 is enjoying a less hectic pace of life. And maybe that's what God wants for us all the time. Maybe that's what He's always intended for us, and we have just gone beyond that pattern. Well, surely everyone passed the Sabbath test because they were clearly instructed of what to do or not to do, and then they were told why they were to do it or not to do it. But we read this in verse 27. Nevertheless, some of the people went out on the seventh day to gather it, but they found none. You know, there will always be those who fail to pay attention for whatever reason. They just don't get it. They have to try it on their own. And I'm sure they were hungry on that first Sabbath when they went out and couldn't find any bread of heaven. But I'm sure they didn't make that same mistake on the second Sabbath. Though this was a four-part test, it's really the same question over and over. Would they believe and trust the good Father at His word? You know, he was teaching them about himself in the wilderness. He had already shown, him, shown them on several occasions of his power, but now he was also wanting to teach him that his word is forever true. Even when it's a hard word, a challenging word, a convicting word, as well as a comforting word, it's God's absolute word by which we choose to obey or not. We choose for our good or for our peril if we don't choose it. So it comes down to this. Do we believe that our Father in heaven is good? That His Word is true? That He's leading us on the best possible path as we go forward? And will you choose to trust Him today for that one thing that you need? For that one challenge or trouble that's causing you anxiety or fear in your life? or for that one answer that has been a long time in the coming. What is the test of your life today? Will you pass it? You know, I know you will. If you choose to go forward in your redemption and the power of the Holy Spirit with your hand in the hand of the Father. Would you pray with me? Our Father, I pray that for all of us, that we would go forward with our hand in your hand, trusting in your goodness, trusting in your love, trusting in your mercy, trusting in the truth of your word. Even when it's a difficult word, a hard word, a challenging word, that we will not change it to conform to our way of life, but we will change our pattern of life to conform to your word so that we might be transformed by your spirit and become the brand new people that you have created us to be through Christ's redemption. So I pray the power of your Holy Spirit upon all of us that as we make this journey forward, we would go forward in faith. We would go forward in trust. We would go forward in strength, knowing that we don't go alone, but we're going in your power. You're going with us and where we're going, you're already there. Give us that confidence. Give us that clarity. Give us that comfort today, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.
Let's sing this song together. stories of what they think you're like but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone you're a good good father it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. I see many searching for answers. Far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide because you know just what we need before we say a word. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You are perfect in all your ways. You are perfect in all your ways. You are perfect in all your ways. To You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To Love so undeniable, I can hardly speak. Peace so unexplainable, I can hardly think as you call me deeper still as you call me. Deeper still as you call me, deeper still into love, love, love. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am, you're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Thanks so much for worshiping with us today. It's always good to have you and see your names on the chat feature. And you know, we really appreciate your generosity as you continue to give online, as you continue to mail in your offerings to the church office so that we can continue to seek and reach the world for Jesus Christ so that we can go forward in our mission. I hope you have a great week. Look forward to seeing you next week, whether it's in person or online. In the meantime, may the love of God, the grace of our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, and the powerful presence of the Holy Spirit lead you forward today, tomorrow, and forevermore. 
Amen.